The Anson Report podcast is brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com slash Anson Report for your free 30-day trial and free audiobook. What, you thought I could read? As if. Do not forget that you yourself are not so very different from us. In the 13 Seekers of Darkness. Hey, let's hit these plot points in order. I'll always be there to get my friends back. The being you and your friends called Ansem. Dreams hold our memories. Sleep holds our dreams. And darkness, it holds our sleep. Good tidings, everybody, and welcome to the Answer oh Report Podcast. Gosh, this is the 13th oh Answer gosh. Report Podcast. We're super excited because today is the day. It is the 13th episode. It's the day goes down. It was fated to happen. It was fated to happen this way. This is the 13th. This is the 13th <laughs> episode. So we are going to be talking all about the organization 13, as suggested to us by our boy El Pair Pair. Shout El out to El Pair Pair. Or girl, I guess. Boy, or I'm not sure. But El Pair Pair is awesome. El Pair Pair, thank you. Uh, before we get into the meat of this, which is you and I have both come up with our own list of the 20 organization members, new and old. Mm hmm. And we have them ranked. Before we do that, we want to remind you that you guys can hit us up at answerreportpodcast at gmail.com, on Twitter at Spike Getty Bros. Leave a comment on our YouTube channel on one of these videos if you're watching on YouTube or listening on YouTube. Or you can just, you know, yell outside in your house. Just yell outside. Spike Getty Bros. Answer report. And we'll answer. <laughs> we we can hear. We can hear, we'll hear everything. Your calls. We, we'll hear everything. Quick topic before we get into the meat of this, Jason. Okay. Since it's all organization today, this is this is the yeah. 13th episode. It's all organization. Can you can you hit me with one of your favorite organization member moments? Ooh. Okay. KH two. Yep. When you go into Hollow Bastion and it's after the um the gate defense in the bastion mm -hmm. and you go in and then they all like one by one pop up mm. on, on top of that big that's wall. That's classic. That's classic. That's a, mm. and then Zigbar kind of stops you yeah. for a second there. Yeah. He doesn't take his hood off. Yeah. 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 That's, yep. like, that's, that's I like, mean, that's arguably, I mean, they weren't even 13 at that point anymore, but that's arguably the organization moment, right? Right. It's, it's like that or like, in the when they're in the room with all the chairs. Yeah, the chair, the room with all the chairs is is great, especially at the beginning of a three five eight. I really like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a couple. I really like when Lexius punches Roxas. Okay, that's a classic <laughs> organization. Uh, okay. A uh, moment. It's the only thing of note Lexius actually does. Yeah. Is punch Roxas to get him to activate his limit break. Yeah. Um, I really like uh, DMX in Kingdom Hearts two. Okay. Not this. I mean. In in Olympus he's fine, but when you meet him before the big thousand heartless battle, I just think that's such a cool character moment for him, and I think we'll talk about. It that. seems like he's really badass at that point, right? It's and he he does like he's been kind of happy go lucky before, and then he goes silence traitor and points at him. And you're like, I, oh god! And then Star Wars stole that stole that <laughs> with yeah the, with the stormtrooper traitor. going traitor. They stole that from from Demix. Does um, he look like a traitor? Anyway, I also. Uh, Really enjoy anything with Zemnus. Yep. He's a classy dude. When he says good tidings, obviously. Obviously. And I, I do actually, in Chain of Memories, people don't talk about this much, but that was the first time we got a whiff of the organization. Mm -hmm. And I really do like the intrigue of whose side is who on, what's Axel doing, right. what's, yep. what's Vexen doing, what's Marluxia doing. On That's both good. sides of it, Sora's side and Riku's side, I, yeah. I really like that. Uh, do you have any other uh, organization moments you want to throw out there? I feel like it's still considered organization moment. Axel versus Roxas in KH2. Yep. I'm so flattered. Yep. That that's is a definitely, great moment. That's a definitely organ I mean, in my opinion. The reunion in KH3 of, right. of the 358. I guess that's not like. That, that's what I was going to say. The only thing with Roxas that wouldn't be considered an organization moment to me is is when is he comes that? back and he's against okay. the organization. Okay. You know? 
because it's. I don't know. I still. I feel like that's a. Uh, that's that's still like the arc that we have is, from it is Chain of Memories that lore. and Three Five Eight. And you could just say it is anyway, because I mean, Zemnis is there and Sai. Right, yeah, there like and, there's a lot of. I, right. I think that still counts. Okay. And then All Sora right. and Kyra just in the back, like. Hmm? Right. <laughs> well, Sora gets like knocked unconscious by a. Yeah. One swipe. Yeah. Or something. I don't know what's going on there. There's a lot of. There's Too a lot OP. of weird. There's a lot of weird, like pro wrestling esque. Oh, this guy got knocked out of the ring, so you won't see him for ten minutes. Kind of stuff going on there. Yeah, um, yeah I. Uh, I mean, I didn't really include any KH three moments in my head. Mm. Hold on, I got a burp. <clears throat> oh yeah, I didn't really include a lot of KH three moments in my head. Mm. Uh, but there are some good ones. Yeah. I, I, I like Lark scene in general in Kingdom Hearts three. I know you don't like Lark scene, and yeah. you say she's crusty. Yeah, she's but crusty. I think of the organiz besides maybe young Xehanort, of the organization members we see, she has the most effective dialogue. Like Marluxia's kind of just like randomly there. Yeah. He doesn't really do much. And then Luxord is a joke. Yeah. Everything Luxord does is just doesn't even count. Mm. Nothing he does is good. Um No. But yeah. Wow. Organization, man. I mean, let, let me ask you this question. Kingdom Hearts two, I'm trying to figure out how to answer ask this question to you. Okay, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts two. Introduce well, it didn't introduce the organization, but it really the organization was a huge part of it. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts One didn't have any organization influence, mm -hmm. right? It, it, I don't think it even existed in in Nomura's right. mind at that yeah. point. I think this series, it it if for some reason, say say Kingdom Hearts Two was just kind of its own contained story again with no organization. I don't think all these other games exist. No, I think the organization kind of carrying it. <laughs> the organization is so important to what kingdom hearts is and that's why when people are like oh it's the end of the dark seeger and i'm excited to see what they do next i'm a little worried yeah because the organization they're kind of like like the zaldin and, <laughs> and lexius is and somebody's didn't even get voice actors right so they weren't like, important at they're all they're gone now yeah. right, as yeah. far as i'm concerned oh yeah they're not coming back yeah they're not coming back and ienzo was just there to be leon so they didn't have to use leon right you know smart smart boy leon right he was like leon mixed with sid and Aerith. And basically Yuffie. yeah like he, he they just took those final fantasy characters mushed them all together in the enzo and they're like know? yeah that's the enzo he yeah. can do all this and then just so he could have his reunion with ansem that too yeah but i mean part of that too is because lexius and zaldin were kind of just like they were just guards yeah you know like before they don't have like a huge story arc beforehand where like uh um, Zexion or Yenzo, he had this arc where he did betray his master, you know. Yeah, yeah. And Axel had uh, the sneaking into the castle, Isa, and you know, yeah. they, and they had that. So the and you know now Larkseen and Marluxia have this like Union Cross history. Yeah. And so everybody besides those guys and and Demix, who we don't know. Demix, I think Demix is more important than they're leading on. Yeah. On purpose. Um we're going to I think we're going to find out more about him, but those guys in I general. Think, I don't know. I feel like Jason, they got no, voice actors. No he got, matter he got a voice actor. No matter what Right, but like, no matter what, is he gonna be more important than Z Zigbar? Like, it, 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 like no. there's gonna be a reveal, right? And he might be more important than like what he seems. But I feel like it's kind of overshadowed by Zigbar is lose you. Yeah, yeah, I, possible. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't think we're done with Demix. I think mm. he's gonna. There's gonna be more to him. Where I think you're right about. Got uh, Dylan and what was. What's Lexius' uh, real name? I don't know. <laughs> He's pure strength. Yeah. I didn't even put Lexius down you on my put... list. I put pure strength. <laughs> well, that's a meme we came up with. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I I, think they're done. I don't think we see them. I think it's possible we don't see Enzo or uh, Vexen ever again. They might be done. They might, like, pop up. Right. Um. Like oh they're in the background like doing maybe they're stuff. maybe they're there maybe they replace Chip and Dale finally <laughs> I, I don't know about that I would like that really yeah I hate Vexen I, I don't want to talk to Vexen I hate Chip dude I actually like Vexen what in this game it made me like him more in case hmm. three made me like okay him more. he was more likable in case like three. he he seems like he could be like the most evil guy of all time right. well and he he was kind of weird and. That's kind of another thing. There's that, some there's some storyboard stuff that just like kind of got switched around and stuff to make him go from like 
seeming like super evil. Like well, his right. facial animations. When you were see super him good. at Pirates, he's like lamenting the fact that they didn't f- they didn't find out what Davy Jones' deal is, and he sounds so evil. And then literally, like the next scene with him, he's rescuing Ansem. Yeah, and you're like, who was he putting that act on for at Pirates? If right, you don't know. No one was there. You know what I mean? Well, Luxord. I don't think Luxord was even by him. I thought he was next to him. No, I think he was just like up on the mast of the ship, like going ah, I'm curses. Blah, 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 blah. Mm, I don't Maybe know. I'm wrong. I, I maybe I'm remembering the scene differently. Yeah, so that I, I that's our uh, organization memories talk. Yeah, memories of the organization. I feel like we're missing a big one. We we definitely are. For some reason, this isn't an organization memory, but in my head, all that keeps popping in is when Zach asked Aqua out on a date because that's my favorite Kingdom Hearts cut scene of all time. <laughs> it's so awkward, and I love it. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's Brag losing his eye. That's a classic. Yeah. There's. Yeah, there, there's. I, I, mean, I like the cut scene where like they're all standing up on top of the world that never was, looking at Kingdom Hearts. Oh yeah. And they're all kind of like in a line. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yep. Yep. That's from three five eight, right? Yep. Yeah, and the, and and uh, Shion and and Roxas are kind of just like. Eh. It's like when you're... Everyone you're, seems kind of disinterested, actually. Right. It's just a, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts is the heart of all It's like they're going to Sunday school. <laughs> right. He's like, they're like, the power of Jesus. And they're like, yeah, whatever, dude. I just want to go play on the slide. You know? Yeah, that's definitely what that is. I do like that scene, though, because it is. It, it's it, it's an iconic area. Like I said, any, anything that paints Zenmus, like this mastermind, is, is yeah. I'm a big fan of. I love Zenmus. And then, you know, I we we'd be amiss to not mention they all kind of get their their final scenes in Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah. You know, well, some of them final, some of them not. Yeah. Uh, some of them are a little weird and off tone. Some of them are good. Some of them are just whatever. But yeah, they all they all kind of got their moment. And thank you, Tetsuya Nomura, for 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 doing yeah. that. I think that was really cool. Uh, that made it much more satisfying to me. Anyway, dude. Let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we will when get to back. the list. There are 20 organization members, new and old, and Jason and I are going to rank them and then argue about it because we ranked them separately. Yes. So if you like watching those like sports shows where they yell at each other about nothing, they're just two guys. So it's not going to be like that. And it's not going to be like those shows. Those shows suck. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not. It was just a comparison. We're good. They're bad. Yeah, yeah. Screw you, Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith. You know, I do like the Shannon Sharp meme. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. problem. That's not a problem. That ain't no problem. problem. That ain't no problem. Oh, anyway. No. There's some good memes that come out of that show. That's true. It's mostly <laughs> Shannon Sharp, though. I like Shannon Sharp. I think <laughs> Shannon Sharp's a good dude. And he was a really good NFL tight end. So Okay, okay. Anyway, we'll, we'll be back in a minute. Has this ever happened to you? You're given a role by your crazy master who disappears, and he just gives you a book, but he didn't even ask you if you could read. Try Audible. Listen to this happy customer. At first, I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to fill out my role, but thanks to Audible, I got to know what my role is. Also, I still can't read. Thanks, Audible. Luju, what was your role? Tell you my role as if. Go to audibletrial.com slash answer report to get your free 30-day trial and audiobook download. Thank you to Audible for sponsoring. Now back to the show. Wow. Uh, thank you to Luju slash Zigbar for uh, yeah. that read. Yeah, that was that was wow. amazing. That uh, that was heart touching. I, I might go I, check that, out Audible. Yeah, I might go check out Audible. That's, just to save that man's career. Right, he life, didn't even probably. know what his role was. Yeah, yeah, we we still don't know what his role was. Maybe we should look on Audible. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, let's get into this, dude. Uh, we're gonna start at number twenty, and we're gonna go right down the list. Oh, okay? we're going, we're going. Okay, okay, we're going reverse. All right. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. You don't want to start at one. That's, that's true. That's true. That's. that's psh- so what we've done is we've taken, there's 20 organization members, the original 13 plus the seven that were added into the real organization 13 in Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay, so I'm just going to read you a list in no particular order of the uh, 
the different members so you guys can maybe play along at home and rank them yourself. Zenmus, Zigbar, Roxas, Larxene, Luxord, Zexion, Lexius, Zaldan, Marluxia, Vexen, Syax, Axel, Shion, Demix, Riku Replica, Ansem, Young Xehanort, Vanitas, Terranor, and Master Xehanort. Those are the 20, okay? So Jason and I are going to start at number 20 here. My number 20, I'm very passionate about. Okay. The fact that he should be number 20. Okay. But I want to hear what you say first. Okay, my number 20 is Repliku. Okay, all right. I, he I, does it. I, I felt like he's just the most whack. Like, okay, okay, he's Riku, but, like, I don't believe it's not, like, believable. You know, it just kind of seems like it's, like. Because well, he's not really Riku. He's a replica. Right, right. But, like, that's the thing. Like, uh, I don't. I have him ranked higher on mine, a, a couple spots higher. But I agree with you. If he was really, if he was Riku from that time. Yeah. Instead of the replica from that time, yeah. I would dig it much more. Right. That's but what I'm saying. But when you find out he's the replica, it's kind of like, eh. Yeah. Also, it seems like all he can do really is like summon more heartless. I don't know. Like, yeah. He doesn't do anything cool when he's given the chance, and then you fight him, and he just kind of, he's not even as good as. I was kind of hoping he was doing KH1 Riku well, stuff. Well, that's what I was going to say. He's not even as good as KH1 Riku in his fight. He does yeah. He does some of the stuff similar, but it's yeah. not. And his, like, um, his his DM in that fight isn't great. No. it's Zigbar's is way cooler. Yeah. You know? So I'd much rather kill Repliku first and then let Zigbar do, do yeah, his. Yeah, do his thing. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, my number 20 is Luxord. Is Luxord? Okay. Because Luxord, people have said, and I think this is an interview, Nomi- it's Nomura's favorite organization member. Really? Yes, is Luxord. Ooh. Which, okay. Hot take. First, first, <laughs> first we got to talk about how they pronounce his name in KH3. Don't they pronounce it Luxord? Maybe. Which is absolute garbage and completely wrong. And if that's the real pronunciation, I'm super mad. because I think they just did that because they had Lux in Union Cross and stuff. And I but, they think- okay. The, the Luxor is a casino. Yeah. Okay. That's why he's named that. Yeah. It's the Luxor. So it's not the Luxor. <laughs> so why would you make him Luxor? That's the <laughs> stupidest thing I've ever heard of. He's named after a casino. Uh, you get what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, that's so dumb. Um, also, uh, he's bland. He just looks like a dude with too many piercings. Okay. He doesn't have very much personality. No, he doesn't have any backstory, which supposedly we're going to get sooner or later, okay? Yeah. His boss fights range from this sucks to this was the easiest thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. Okay. Um his heartless his both the heartless that he that he summons, the one in KH2 and the one in KH3 are like the worst. Right. So in my opinion, Luxord is the worst organization member okay. by far. Okay. By far. But he gives you the wild card. Yeah, I don't care. Because you're a wild card. Yeah, I know I'm a wild card. Maybe but... we'll play poker one day, you 15-year-old. When we're just regular dudes. When we're just dudes. Well, that's what sort of When we're just Maybe. guys. When we'll g- I'll give you a beer, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> don't tell anyone, and then we'll go We'll go chill in my bathtub. Oh, <laughs> boy. Oh, Luxord, easy, buddy. So, yeah. I will go my number 19 next because you went first on number 20. Okay. Vexen. Vexen. Okay. Mm. You talked about how you actually like Vexen in KH3, and I agree I like him more in KH3. Yeah. But I hate him so much in Chain of Memories. That yeah. It, and he looks like um, the lead singer of Skid Row or one of those bands. <laughs> you know, the guy that's on, he's on uh, Gilmore Girls, and he's like in the band with the people, and he's actually a real, Sebastian Box his name. I think he looks I don't just know. like Vexen, <laughs> and like he talks like him, and it's just I I hate him. Okay, I hate him, and he's like science, and then he like he has a shield for a weapon, but he's not particularly good at using it, and he seems way too obsessed with like remaking Riku and Chain of Memories, like and yeah, well, it, and I, like it's I, it's almost like a like a obsession with Riku, and it's really weird to me. Yeah, and he just he just seems weak and and ineffective and. Okay. And in Kingdom Hearts 3, that is the exception. I agree. He He's much better in Kingdom Hearts 3, but he's yeah. still weird. His tone's off at certain points. I think, and- I think if if you take his, his like, drive and, like, what he wanted, because when they made Chandler Memories, he didn't know what he wanted. Right. Like, he, he didn't know who Vexen was, right? If you take that, like, oh, I want this for this, and, like, give him that, that clear, defined role and what he wants... Like his goal personally, mm-hmm. 
in Chain of Memories. I think he's so, like a way better character. Possibly. I, I, I agree. I, th- I think he's a way better character if, if you see that he's kind of just like Cole's calculating. All he cares about is his research, even if that means his like in now it, it kind of gets thrown out from underneath, like cut under, gets his legs cut underneath because then it, the next cut scene he's in, he's saving Ansem. Right. So it's a little whack, but right. I guess we'll maybe we'll find out what he needed to atone for. Yeah, we, we didn't really get that other than, oh, he would like made a replica and you know what I mean? And it was bad. Uh, that's the only thing I can. Yeah, but that seems weak. Like he probably tested on people, but like we right. don't see. It. Well, and he just seems like he's too sniveling for me. Definitely like, in in re in rechain. Right. And like when I, I love the. Um, he's like, oh, don't kill me. And then Axel it. goes. They toned it down in Rechain, but in the original Chain of Memories, like Axel straight up murders him, and it's awesome. Oh snap! He's like begging Axel for his life, and Axel's like, "Well, I guess you should say that, and then and yeah. kills him." And Sora's like, "Whoa!" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty. I, I remember. Seeing, in the real, I saw that like last week, yeah. and was like, "Oh, I forgot how right. like crazy in the chain that of, is. Real Chain of Memories." He absolutely murders him, and I love it. Um, <laughs> in this one, he's kind of like he still murders him, but it's not yeah. as blatant. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's all I gotta say about Vex. And who's your number nineteen? My number 19 is Demix. What? Yep. What? Yep. No. How dare His you? His fights are the worst in KH2. As a kid, especially. <sighs> They're not that bad. I literally threw a PlayStation 2 controller. Do you know how sacred that is? You know how often you throw a PlayStation 2 controller? I threw the PlayStation 2 controller across okay. the room All right. and stopped playing. Okay. That fight, awful. He's All kind right. of a wuss. We don't know his backstory. I'll give you that in KH2 when he goes, traitor. I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Okay. Right. It's going down. Right. But he doesn't have that really in KH3 either. He says, though, in KH3, he goes, I can be pretty, what is the word he uses? Menacing? I don't remember. I don't think it's menacing. It's something like that. I could be this what I want to be. And it's like, yeah, you can, dude. You definitely can. All right. So, okay, I, I, as of right now, number 19. I will concede that where I have Demix ranked is too high. Okay. I don't know that he's 19, but... Okay. All right. You, uh, you're next with, with 18. All right. Um, Zexion. Okay. I have a similar ranking to Zexion. Yeah. Zexion, he's kind of whack. See, I the, really, really, really don't like his data fight. His data fight is ass. It's awful. Um, and he uses a book for a weapon. Yeah. See, why doesn't Vexen have a book for a weapon? That makes more sense. Yeah. But anyway, Zexion. This isn't. Uh, this isn't hate on Vexen. Yeah. This, this is, is, this is this hate is, on Vexen hour. This is Zexion, and how there's a lot of things that, for me that don't make a lot of sense with it. And there's like literally like lore breaking things with him where it's like, oh, they don't age. They're nobodies or whatever. Right. And then he literally ages. Right. So there's, I don't know, maybe they're like, oh, they did tests and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it made that happen. But yeah, I, I think he's just kind of lame. I like his hair. Um, And there was, I, I don't know if you remember, but, and this was back, back in the day. But when Kingdom Hearts 2 was the newest Kingdom Hearts game, they did this thing where his, um, well, shit, is that right? Are you talking about the broken door or something yeah. like that? Like you didn't know what his weapon was or something like that? Yeah. Do you remember what I'm talking about? But that doesn't make sense because Chain of Memories was out already, right? Or was, did Chain of Memories come out after 2? I think Chain of Memories came out after. Okay, yeah. So that's what it was. When Kingdom Hearts 2 was out, they had this, you know, they had their different um, doors you could go through and it showed their weapon. Yeah. But Zexian's was gone. Like it didn't exist. Like it was broken. Yeah. So everybody's like, oh, what's his weapon going to be? It's got to be something important. If his, you know, everybody yeah. was freaking out about it. And then it was a book. Yeah. And it was like, why did they hide this? It doesn't do anything specific. It just kind of seemed and like they randomly wanted to damage one. Right. It's not like the Book of Prophecies or anything. It's not like an important <gasps> book. Oh my God. Right? It's not? Yeah, no. Right. It's I, just, it's a, just book, a book. Yeah. You know? And so I don't know why. And I, I think it was probably that Nomir didn't know what weapon to give him yet. And then he gave him a book. Yeah. But, like, I remember that, and then that was such a letdown to find out that it wasn't anything cool and he wasn't more important yeah. than that. and a lot of people are like, oh, he, he has a Keyblade, too, or something like that. Right, that's what people were thinking. Yeah. Um, I mean, he wasn't 
important. He's kind of the most important organization member in Chain of Memories. Memories that's not Marluxia or Axel, I guess. You know what I mean? Because he's kind of isn't he? Isn't he the boss for Riku? Um. Yeah. Because Riku doesn't fight Marluxia. No. So Zaxian is kind of like Riku's final boss. Yeah. I don't know. I just I don't. I don't like him. I feel like his his motives are kind of meh. His character isn't super cool to me. No, I understand. Completely. I think I think compared to everyone else, he's lame. Wow. Okay. All yeah. right. So That's my number my number eighteen is Lexius. 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 How dare you? Now we've made Lexius into a bit of a meme, right? Yeah. By saying who powers pure strength and that's just he learned it has a power meter in his fight, right? And and but when we're talking lame, he's lame. He 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 has no personality. The coolest thing he ever does is punch Roxas in the face. A top ten moment. A top ten moment, but that's. All he does, he doesn't have a memorable boss fight. His or his data fight sucks. He, I like his data. It fight. has a cool like, like it's, mechanic, it's, but it's it's well, whatever. It doesn't really mean anything at the end of the day. You still just fucking use duck flare on him. You know what I mean? Like it's not kind of it, it, to me. It's not anything better. And not saying I'm good at the fight or anything. <laughs> but I'm just saying like, there's nothing like cool or unique about it. I like it because it's like a. Very... I don't like his hair. Bro, don't knock on the guy's hair. It's too curly. Curly? Yeah, his hair's super curly, and then he puts it up in a ponytail. Ish. It like, it looks like it's that. So it doesn't actually have a ponytail, but it has like it comes to a point at the end. But it's curly hair. Okay. Um, and then he doesn't have a voice actor in Kingdom Hearts three, which is lame. the equivalent of not being important. That's pretty lame. Sorry, Phil. He got and, turned into a jobber. Yeah, and they do that thing where they like. One grabs the other one's shoulder and they're like, Ooh. and it's like they're so lame in that game. <laughs> and so, I think out of all the organizations, like I actively don't like Vexen, mm-hmm. right? And I could like Luxord, but they've made too many. He, everything he does, I didn't mention this, but he's just equated with like annoyance. Well, in and the everything game. he does in Kingdom Hearts Three is an absolute failure. Yeah, everything he does is fail. Fail, 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 fail. Hey, race me in the ship. Fail. Hey, fight me in the ship. Fail. Everything he does is fail. He doesn't do anything cool or unique. Right. He just kind of hangs around and then fails at everything. Hey, man. He bodies Mickey. He pulls out that blue eyes only white dragon after, card. Only <laughs> after Zenmus, like, shoots goo onto him or whatever to make him stronger. <laughs> and then even then, his boss fight is awful. You can literally cast fire on him. Hit him, hit him with a combo and cast you, fire. Yeah, you hit dead. him five times and hit him with fire and he dies. Stupid. And then he's like, oh, find me in the card. And then he literally tells he you what card it around. is. He was blue. Yeah. Anyway, I was talking about Lexius. Like, I don't like I don't like Vexen and Luxord is bad. Actively. Like, but Lexius to me is the most bland, lamest organization member. Okay. okay. And that's why I have him at number 19. Okay. I'm sorry, number 18. My number 17, we don't need to talk about it more, is Zexion because we just talked about him. Okay. But I have him. I've similarly ranked as okay. you. So who's your number 17? My number 17. Lark scene. How dare you? She's the most crusty of all you? organization no. members. No. Her data fight is just a clusterfuck. Also, I hate, hate. It just makes me cringe so much. The what? What else to choose? It's I not hate what she says. that. That's not what she says. I hate that. What? What else to accept? Okay. Yeah. See, even more crusty. <laughs> It, I hate. I know. I'm waiting to find it, out. She's just like. I just hate women. Being <laughs> the fact that no, no. <laughs> like, very similar to how how I feel about the other ones that I don't like. It, and I, it's kind of hinted at at the end of KH three. But like pre KH three, we don't know like what her like motive is right. or backstory or anything. And then it's like, oh, she's in in Union Cross and she's connected she to loves Marluxia. Marluxia. He's beautiful. He is beautiful. But she's the most undeserving of all time. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I I'll I'll battle you and I'll battle you on this one, Larkson. And she's comes super up for me. annoying in Chain of Memories. There's like so many cutscenes with her. 
I'll, I'll just bat- being crust as hell. I'll battle you on this one when, You're like, when oh I have her come God, up. Oh my God, shut up, Larksy. No, I love Larksy. Shut the hell up. Uh, I'll die. For, I'll ride or die for Larksy. <laughs> anyway, who's your uh, 16? My 16, Young Xehanort. <laughs> young Xehanort. Whoa, why yeah, did I hate on Young Xehanort, dude? <sighs> I really That's don't. Wild. I really don't like him in DDD, and I feel like I feel like there's so many good organization members that that's why he falls this low. Wow! 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 Young Xehanort. Yep, Young Xehanort. Holy cow! Yep, Young Xehanort. Uh, okay, can you, can you give me can you give, lay it on me? What's the okay, fight okay. against Young Xehanort here? So, for one... The man controls time. If we're talking, like, you know how we have, like, secret boss battles and all that? The Young Xehanort secret boss battle is the most lame. Like, you know how you can fight, like, No Name and a Xemnas in mm-hmm. Cage 1? And then Cage 2, you fight, like, uh, I guess the equivalent would be, like... Lingering Will. Lingering Will. And then BBS, you have the Young Xehanort fight. And that's just trash. Okay, I agree with that. That is a trash fight. So, there's that for, like, gameplay-wise, right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, lore-wise, I just remember being, like, so confused to frustration in DDD. Like, and I just equate that with his character. That's fair. He wasn't... He, he was all right. DDD. He was all right in... He, he was somewhat redeemed in Cage 3 for me, especially with, like, the there's no saving you, like, that type of mm-hmm. stuff. But, like, other than that, I, I feel like they could have added more to his character to make me be like, okay, like, I believe in this character, you know? Okay. All right. I, I just surprised. I, I, I thought Young Xehanort's a lock for top 10. That's what I thought. Wow. But I, wow. That's the first big surprise here. Uh, bouncing <laughs> back to me, I have Riku Replica, and I don't think we need to say any more about him because he sucks. Um, and he's just. He's Riku, so he's cool to a certain extent. But like we said, if he would have been Riku from that time as opposed to the replica from that time, I would. I'm liked sorry. Him more. I'm sorry. What'd you do? I I read the wrong one. I had Luxord there. Oh. And then Young Xehanort. So I guess I just gave those two. <laughs> so you're wait. So I have Luxord. Okay. So then. And then Young Xehanort. So when I come back to you, Young Xehanort would be your next. Yes. One. Yes. Okay. So what's yours? Uh, my next one might be a little controversial for you. Okay. Um, Marluxia. Marluxia. Number fifteen. Okay. Okay. Uh, Marluxia, yes, is the leader of the traders in the organization, mm. and that makes him interesting. I think he is. He's interesting visually. Yeah. Um, and I think its fights are interesting visually. However, and his weapons cool. His weapons yeah. cool. However. You don't really. He, he has this motivation for being a traitor in the first in the game he appears in, in mm-hmm. Chain of Memories. And then he appears back in the organization again for Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. No, um, he his fights suck. Yeah, visually they're cool and they have like cool ideas, but the actual fights well, themselves suck. Uh, his well, his data fight. I like his data fight. Other than that, anything with him I don't like. Right. Um, even in three, his, his, uh, DM yeah. is ass. Yeah. It's cool looking, but it's ass. Mm. You can't even block it or dodge it. Right. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's weird. It's just ass. It's just ass. I think personality wise, he's kind of boring. He's like in cage three is boring for sure. He's the <laughs> guy, you know what yeah. I mean? Like the, the Japanese stereotype of a guy who's like too pretty, and so he has a voice. You know, yeah. and he doesn't have that voice specifically. He might as well. But in a different <laughs> in a different world, he, he would. Does, yeah. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. they toned it down a little bit, but he he's basically that st- rose petals. You know yeah, what I mean? Like he's yeah. that guy, right. and that that's a stereotype I'm not a huge fan of as okay. far as Japanese like anime and video games go. Okay. Um, and just you know, I, I, maybe we get more backstory on him. Uh, as Lorium, and mm. and we go okay. Maybe he's cooler than I thought. But right now, I'm just kind of I'm lukewarm on him. Yeah, and we're we're getting to where it goes to like, like it's less about how much we don't like this person, and more about oh, there's just better people. There's just better. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with that. We're starting so, to get there. So that's my thought on my number fifteen. Your number fifteen was Young Xehanort, but now what's your number fourteen? I have it written down as Gay Man Xehanort. 
as in old man Xehanort. Master yes. Xehanort? I'm so mad at his ending. Oh, dude, it's he's so cool in BBS and in everything that he's in. Mm-hmm. In Dream Drop Distance, he seems that so badass. And then he, how he dies in the end, in the fight? No. No, no, no. I don't like it. You're number 14. Wow. He doesn't even you, make the top 13. I had him as number 13. Like, uh, and I feel like that's pretty prestigious, right? In, in to be number thirteen in the organization thirteen list, uh-huh. and I was like, you know what? No, I'm gonna give it to whoever I else have at number thirteen instead of old man Xanort because he doesn't deserve it. Wow. Okay. I but don't you think? Don't you think that how chess. cool he was in those other games kind of would propel him forward farther though? You you could probably talk me into moving him up to thirteen. Okay. But as of how I'm feeling right now today. Well, no. the loss of the you know Leonard Nimoy passing. Yeah, that too. And you know, I sh- I think the other voice actor does an okay job, but there's certain lines he delivers that are just bad, and yeah. and that hurts him for me too. But I I still have him higher than you do. Okay. Uh, so my number fourteen, and we talked about this guy already a little, is Demix. Okay. I didn't get Demix in the top thirteen, but I do really like Demix. I think he ex- like not everybody in the organization can be like ass kicking like badasses. Yeah, okay? yeah. He sits there and he tunes his sitar all the time. They don't even have it make noise when he's doing it in three, which is it's so stupid. So stupid. It's so bad. But I wish they did. Uh, and I, I just, I just think there's more to him than meets the eye. I think his hair is cool. He's kind of like got like the girl like slick back. Thing yeah, going yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I've always liked him even when it was like when two had come out and i was playing i was like i like this guy this guy's funny you know okay his fights are a little admittedly not fun Mm -hmm. um i hope we get to fight him again someday and and get he gets a redeeming fight yeah but i i don't know i i like him i i think he and i think his his character's funny in 358 as well when you go talk to him and he's just like man lark seed's a bitch right you know like i dig that i like that about him speaking of lark scene that's who I have at number 13. That's who you have at 13. That's who I have at 13. Okay. Uh, Hit me with it. I love oh, Larkin. 13. I just think she's very... Um, Unapologetic. Yeah, she's very much who she is. and uh, That's her one, the one quality I do like about her. I, I'm not a huge fan of her hair. I, I will put that out there. Very crusty. It, it's a little... I don't, I don't get why. I don't know what else to have, though. That's the thing. Right. Well, is that like a... a it kind of stere- fits... Right, but is that like a stereotype or like a type of anime well, hair? If you, if you see what she looks like in Union Cross, she has like pigtails. Mm, at so where her, nobody her spikes just said, are. So nobody just said, let's have little antenna hairs. Let's just up? have antenna hairs that defy gravity mm. instead of like like pigtails. Well, okay, and what I like about her is, you know, a lot of times in these games and in and, and anime and things like that, uh, girl characters are very, very soft and very. Um, helpless you know yeah, <coughs> Kyrie. Yeah. um right. and she's not right you know what i mean she's not i mean yes she is following lurium you know for whatever we don't know if it's love or what the reason is yet yeah but she's very strong her you know her her weapons are cool she's very independent she it's i, I love the dynamic with her and Demix. Whenever they're together, or even when they're not together, and they're just yeah. talking shit, I think there's a secret <laughs> love relationship there, you know. But they're they're always like, like they there was it's like their exes or something. Right, <laughs> she's always talking shit about him to his face a lot of the time too. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I, I I just think she's super cute, and I just I just like her. Okay, I, I like that her voice isn't like stereotypical. Like, oh my god, da, da, da. you know, it's a little <laughs> more. It's a, like you say, crusty. It's crusty. but it, it's a little more rough and a little more like witch like, I guess. Yeah. And I I don't know. I just really like it about her. Mm. I, I'm I'm a lark scene mark. What can I say? Okay. That's why okay. I got her thirteenth. Okay. Uh, who do you got thirteenth? Thirteen, Vexen. Oh wow, dude, okay. just hit. So I have Vex at nineteenth. You have him thirteenth. Yes, wow. that's probably the biggest separation, maybe. Besides, I don't know how you have. Well, we'll, we'll go over we'll, that. We'll, we'll, we'll but that. um, Vexen, dude, just like how he was in KH three, like in my own head canon, that's like secretly what his his like plot employee mm-hmm. was. Yeah, when he was in Chain of Memories oh, no, and I get that. all that. So that's why I feel like like. I don't know what it was. He just seemed so cool and badass. I was like, oh my God, dude, like everyone is screwed mm-hmm. because Vexen is just a man possessed right now. And like, 
just how they animated his facial features and everything. Yeah, he does look good in three. I agree. He he plays that the the like really scared role in Chain of Memories and just gets killed, which yeah. is just a, a a good scene. I like that scene. Mm. Um, his data fight's like pretty cool and unique. Um, like what nothing I would have really thought of, but it it, it makes sense. Like yeah, with what, yeah, that he makes like what's a clone happening. of you and yeah, yeah, it's it's cool. Um being able to fight anti form that's cool too yeah definitely. so that's why i have him at 13 all right no it's respectable it's respectable i like it um so wait you were next then you would get 12 yep yep who do you got so for 12? for 12 i have marluxia okay um we're, th- we're knocking the same ones out kind right, of right 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 really. right um so marluxia i have at 12 because i feel marluxia is better than the the it's more consistent i feel like yeah it's pretty car- consistent throughout the series I feel like Marluxia is going to be really cool after this, like once they flesh out his story and everything like that. As Lorium? Yeah, as Lorium. Um, Because the idea is that either he's the one who's leading them to dive to a different world line, or he used to have a Keyblade. Right. So there's something up with Lorium. Um, I really like his data fight. His data fight is one of the most satisfying. Well, and if you look at his scythe, that's something that could easily turn into a keyblade you know yeah what I mean? you, you could transition g- that, that pretty easily for yeah. sure but yeah his 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 data fight is one of the most satisfying to do when you're pulling it off and you're just killing him it's 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 really fun um it, in cage three it, it kind of that that's the one i guess inconsistency he has you're just like why is he here right like other than maybe right when his somebody came back or something, right. he was instantly just turned back into well, like a. And I know that's what um, Addison, the Master of Masters, who's not here this day, I know that's what he was. I remember when the trailer came out where Marluxia's eyes were yellow, he was super disappointed because he wanted to know more about Marluxia. And instead, he was just in cahoots with the organization again, even though he was trying to overthrow them. So yeah. I, I, th- and that's one of the reasons I haven't ranked so low, because I, I was pretty disappointed by that myself. Yeah. And it's almost like they were like, well, we have to delay this by a game, so let's just put him in as a bad guy again. And then next game, we'll find out what he's about or whatever, or yeah. Union Cross or whatever. So, no, I agree with you on that. A lot of these, you could talk me into moving up two or three spots or moving down two or three spots. Yeah. Except Luxord. He's last, and he deserves to be. <laughs> All right, All right. Who so my number 12, or 12, 12, 12, my number 12, and he would be higher if not for certain things, is Zaldin. Zaldin. Zaldin, okay. okay. Zaldin in Kingdom Hearts 2 is a name that strikes fear in people's heart, right. okay? Because even casually, this guy sucks, okay? He's, I remember as a kid, Mickey would save me every time. <laughs> he's just tough to fight. Um, he's menacing. The way he, I mean, he's one of the few to actually get involved in a Disney world and the way he messes with Beast and plays mind games with the Beast right. by taking Bell. Uh, he has a cool voice. It's like this weird, like, I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know what. It, the, it, it's almost like. like <laughs> it's like um, Cajun almost. It's almost like a. a, a yeah. A turned down version of like Gambit's voice. Kind almost, of. Almost. But I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be. Um, he has cool facial hair. Yeah, he has dope fucking sideburns that yeah. come in. He has he's like a dragoon, which I love dragoons. Right, but he has like thirteen spears and yeah. like just everything about him is he's super so cool. Dope. Right? And then he becomes a human again in three, and he doesn't even get a fucking voice actor. Yeah, and he has one spear. <laughs> and he has one spear. They downgraded everything about him. Yeah. Um, he doesn't look as swole. And what's strange to me is in two he is one of the most menacing organization members right like he seems pure evil yeah but he doesn't have a backstory that backs that up Mm. i was just a guard at the castle and they were they did experiments on me you know what i mean yeah and then made me a nobody or i agreed to let him make me a nobody i don't know like it just seems off it seems like they had bigger plans for him and then they said no he's just a guard yeah i can't think of what to do with him so he's just a guard right and so he's like lexius but if Lexius was cool in game as well, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, they're the yeah. same person with the exception of that. And that's and why so far, like as of now. Yeah. Right. And that's why like, it's such a bummer that, cause even in three, five, eight, like you can see him setting up his plan against beast. And yeah. Like, that's actually one of the, 
more interesting gameplay parts of 358 when sure. you're going through Beast's Castle. It felt like it actually mattered. Right, because it connects the two, right? Yeah. Where, like, going to Agrabah didn't mean shit. You right, know what I mean? Right. Uh, but, I, yeah, I just really liked Zaldin. And then in 3, they just... Dylan, or whatever, however you say his name. It's just like... Yeah. He's so lame. And and that makes me very sad because yeah. I like him. Um, Did my turn or your turn? It's your turn. You oh, have to go 11. Okay. So 11... I have Terranor. Me too. No shit. Nice. Yeah. Fist bump. <laughs> so Terranor, it, it's tough. Terranor. He's so freaking cool. Just like, besides the fact that he doesn't have that many cutscenes, and I feel right. like that's what might make him more cool. Because when he's in a cutscene, he's either straight up killing everyone. He literally kills Ventus. He literally like, kills like we had someone everybody. comment on our um. Uh, 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 on our YouTube Let's Play saying, I don't know if you noticed, but he literally kills Ventus. Ventus doesn't move after Terror right. hits him. He's dead. Yeah. Uh, he's either killing everyone, He's his his fight is super hard, like, everything about him, he's just fucking, like, all-powerful voice actor, great mm -hmm. design, great. But he's confusing. A little confusing. Because people... You know, Zenmus dies, Ansem dies, should recreate Terranort. Yeah. But it recreates Master Xehanort. Right? That's that's canon what happened. Okay. But Terranort... Is what should happen. Is what should happen, but instead that's Terranort from a different era. That's a time-traveling Terranort. That's what I've read as canon, is that uh -huh. it brought back Master Xehanort. So there's some confusing weirdness with that that I don't quite get. Um... And other than what he does in three, and then his boss fight against Aqua and BBS, he doesn't really do much. Yeah, I mean, he's and then the, just like cut scenes. Well, not not that we've seen. I guess he's the catalyst for the organization in the first place, right? Uh, so he shouldn't be hired based on that. But he's just a confusing character overall. His and his his DM sucks. His DM. It's, it's it's cool. It's visually cool. It's visually cool, and the idea behind it's cool. But I can't damage him during it. Like, come on. And you can't really move either. Right. It's one of the it's one of the more powerful DMs actually. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, you got Vanitas riding on Keyblades. Woo! Woo! You know, just shoot fire at me till I die. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Real easy so, to dodge. And I could be wrong on that. That's what I've read. That the canon version is that that re killing Zemnus and Ansem, the Heartless and the Nobody, recreated Master Xehanort. I always thought it recreated Terranor, and then Master Xehanort was the one who was time traveling. That's what I thought too. But I read that it was different. So maybe I'm wrong. Comment mm. down in the comments or let us know if I'm wrong on that. But either way, it's confusing. Yeah. No. Yeah. It, it, it's definitely confusing. Either way, it's confusing. And then the whole thing where, I think it's. I think it's. To me, it, it's forgivable. Yeah. Because it's like. Because it's Kingdom Hearts. It's Kingdom Hearts, and like with those things, like there there wasn't anything with his character where you're like, wait, what? Right. Whereas there's there's some with some other characters. Whereas he's just he's just evil and wants to kill everything yeah. type thing. Yep. Because. He's the same person as the ma like, and that's what's confusing too. Is it's like one of them has to be from the past, right? Because otherwise, they're the exact same person, right? Like heart wise, yeah, right. Because Master Xehanort took over his body, right? Because you needed it's supposed to be vessel. his new vessel, yeah, right. right. But then he lost his memory. Uh, see, there's 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 some shit it, there. It's where just it's some like, retcon type stuff that if happens. that was if that was what happened, why didn't Terranort just take over the world right then? Yeah. You know what I mean? If that's what he really wanted, you know? And so, uh, it's, it's anyway. Terranort is my number 11. Who's your number 11? Was Terranort? Who's yeah. your number 10? My number 10, Pure Strength. Oh, Alexius. Okay. Pure Strength. Cool, cool, cool. I love the fight. Best meme. Yes, also, it is a good meme. Also, the punch. My power's birth strength. <laughs> yeah, the punch is good too. I forgot about the punch. The punch. Oh, the so it's it's just the culmination, and I don't have really any negative things that I associate him with, besides the whole not having a voice actor. It's kind of yeah. lame. Yeah. But other than that, well, he's, that's that's I my thing. Like he's middle of the road. His weapon is so cool. It's I like really, a, it's like a wrench or something. Right? It, it, yeah, but like <laughs> like. How he, how they have him move it, like he drags it across the ground yeah, when you're doing the cool. reaction command. That is cool. There's weight to that thing. Yeah. Like that thing would kill somebody. You're right. He's slamming it into the ground, making giant earthquakes. Yeah. He's got the power meter level on there. 
Right, Badass. His moving, power is pure strength. I'm changing my list. Lexus is going up two spots ahead of Riku Replica. Okay, okay. I'm moving him up. Okay. I'm, I'm moving him up. You convinced me. <laughs> you convinced me. All right. Uh, number 10. For you. For me. Is Shion. Shion. Okay. Okay. And like you said, we're really getting to the point where I'm like, I love every single character. Yeah. I love Shion. My my main reason for having Shion where she is is we don't get to spend a ton of time with her as com- compared compared to the rest of the people on this list. Right. And her boss fight's lame. Her boss fight is lame. Giant armored person who's yeah. really slow. Yeah, her boss fight is lame, but. I mean, as far as story beats go, you know, three five eight's a very emotional, right. you know, situation. Um, a lot of her like motivation doesn't make sense in cer- certain points in three five eight, and you're just like, wait, why is she running away again? You know what I mean? And it's a lot of it is they don't tell you all the information. You well, yeah, yeah, figure you, you figure it out later, right? But I, I, and I just think she's adorable, and she's, I love her new clothes. That, that's one thing that I feel like it makes it less harming for her character to not understand, like, oh, why is she doing this? Because like for a lot of characters, it's like. You'll find out in the next game, right, maybe. Yeah. But in hers, it's like you find out like in a couple right. hours of gameplay. Well, and you, you consider she's like a she's not a real person. That too, so yeah, yeah. Game. So th- there's there's conceits to it, but uh, I, I the the ba- main the main problem is you know you don't get to spend a whole lot of time with her, and that's why I have her at number ten. Not also, as many memories with her. I I do like how they just made her like a Psyx clone in the fight. Oh, with her weapon? With her weapon, because she was literally just doing the moon the moon dance. Yeah. And then uh It made I, it way more hectic for sure. Right. I, I do like that. Yeah. Uh anyway, who is your number ten, sir? Mine well, we did my number ten. It was pure strength. What? Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. So wait, no, it's my number nine then. Yeah, you're number nine. My number nine is young Xehanort. Young Xehanort. Young Xehanort. Okay. He's a top ten lock for me. I okay. really like him in three. I think um he knows a lot more than he's leading on. Okay. I think he, out of the three dads. Do you equate him with, like, young Xehanort, also chess Xehanort? Is that? No, no? I, I don't. No? I think they're different characters. Okay. Personally. Um, and I think. We're, I mean, like, they have different colored eyes. <laughs> they different eyes, they dress different, they have different demeanors. Okay. Like, young Xehanort playing chess is like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Oh, I lost my chess game. Oh, bummer. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh rats. You know, he's like, then young Zane's like, young Zane's like, you fucking pussy. I'm yeah. gonna beat you in chess. Like, you know what I, mean? I will eventually beat you. I will eventually kill you <laughs> one day. Um, I think his uh, his move set in in fights, whether it's DDD or in three, is very visually different from anybody else yeah, in the series. Uh, it's unique. Like you know it, that fight's hectic with the three dads. But you know when you're being attacked by young Xehanort. That's true. You know what I mean? Because it's this weird green glow, and then yeah, the clock like shows green. up, and yeah, and and I, I that's one of the things about DDD when we play through DDD that I remember being very um struck by was just how visually cool a lot of his attacks looked and 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 mm-hmm. did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he is a little confusing at times. There's especially in DDD. There's some confusion around him, and I get why you would associate. Yeah, that I'm just with not him. super in love with him. You right. know. But I at this point it's like how much I'm in love with people. You yeah, know? <laughs> I do. I do like the three dads. Out of the three dads, that he was the one to not pussy out and was just like, "Sorry, you're gonna die. Peace." <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. like where the other one's like, "Oh, carpe diem," and yeah. then the other one's like, "I wish my friends loved me." You know, and it's like, yeah. "Okay, you big wusses." It it kind of makes sense for for Zemnis a little bit, yeah. no. but I think it makes sense for both of them a little bit, but. They didn't earn it in the story. We talked about this yeah. like forever. They didn't earn it. Where young Xehanort was just kind of like, your time's done, Sora. Peace. Peace. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's my number nine is young Xehanort. Who's okay. your number nine? My number nine is Cyax. Ooh, okay. I like Cyax. it. He, I like it. He's, he's badass. He's consistent. Mm-hmm. Good lines, good voice acting. You're never gonna like wait. Like if you if you're confused on what Syx is doing, it's because like there's more plotting that he's right. doing, yeah. right? And the whole him being connected with with Axel and all those cut scenes with them going back and forth in uh, three five eight over two days. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. His fights are good. They they they're like. A good mix of just like insaneness and like 
having good timing in your fighting. Yeah. And when you hit when you hit him, you can hit him a bunch. He's not gonna teleport and freeze time on you and crap like that. It, it feels like good fair fights, but there's a a certain level of insanity to it that I really like. Yeah. No, I I, I like Sykes a lot. I agree. I have him ranked higher than you, so. Yeah. I mean, his, his dude, like, when in the cutscene where he has, like, the glowing on his, because that's, that's the first time you really see the, like, X on him, like, to that level mm-hmm. in that cutscene. Because, like, it happens when you fight him, but, like, you can't see it very well, right? right? But, like, in that cutscene, his, like, hair is, like, flowing up. Yeah, he the, almost looks Super Saiyan. Yeah, he, he goes, like, Super Saiyan and, like. The power of the moon. Right, you know? right. It's crazy, yeah. so. That's that. I got him at number nine. Who do you got number eight? Zaldin. Okay, all right. The fight's so good. He's so badass in three, five, eight over two days. Love his cutscenes and everything. Same thing in Cage Two. It's it's so disappointing to me that he that he didn't do anything with him. He's number three. Yep. In the organization. Yep. You would think he would be. Well, that doesn't make sense to me either, because like I said, we don't have a backstory on him and what he what right. He so why is he number three? Yeah, I, that 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 to me feels like they're they just number two is kind of dumped right? him. Yeah, two is Zigbar, and Syax is like seven. Yeah, Syax is like seven. But Syax seems like the de facto second right. leader, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it doesn't make much sense. Yeah. Uh and I, I think they Nomir was just like, okay, well, there's Zemnis, he's number one. And then Zigbar's number like it's two. like when he was making like their move sets and everything. Yeah. Zaldan was the third one he right. made. Right, I think that's what it is. It, it and it, that's why he's so cool. With and the strong. exception of Roxas, yeah, he made the first twelve like in Probably. that order. Yeah, he might. Know? They might have. Yeah, and th- that's what I would think because yeah. he's like okay. Zemnis is gonna be something like Ansem and blah blah blah. Right, right. And then there's Zigbar. He has guns. And then there's Zaldan. He's like a dragoon. And then yeah. there's who's four. For uh, I I can't I don't know off the top of my head. Zemnis one, Zigbar two, Zaldin three, Vexen four. Vexen four. Okay. Lexius five. Okay. Like hmm. So okay. the so the it would make sense and the two guards. It would make sense as to why they're close and numbered because they're related, right? Yeah. But as to why they're so high doesn't make as much sense. Zexion. Then Cyax. Axel. Then Axel. Then Demix. Larxene. Luxord. Oh. Then Marluxia. Then Larxene. Mm. Then Roxas. Then Shield. It was almost like he, he got to 12 and went, oh, shit, I didn't make any girls. <laughs> <laughs> here's here's Larxene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I got to make a female. Shit. <laughs> Anyway, but she can't be like your your average female, right? Which I enjoy. Thank you, yeah, Namira. Thank you, thank you. Uh, All right, so is it my seven? Were you done talking about Zaldan? Oh yeah, Zaldan. Uh, I I feel like he they definitely like he was supposed to be something more. Yeah, because he definitely seems like like the strongest of any of them. Right. You know, besides maybe Zemnis. Yeah, yeah, he's very. He strong. He seems like he's the strongest. Like, I think Zigbar's pretty strong too. Right, I think yeah. Zigbar. Zigbar like holds back though. Yeah, That's does, the thing. You can tell. Like he he purposely holds back. Yeah. Okay, so it's actually my eight. Okay. Because you did you did eight and seven. Yep. So my or you did I did nine, nine and eight. eight. My eight is Master Xehanort. Master Xehanort. Master Xehanort. Master Xehanort. Okay. And he would be higher, but for a lot of the reasons you described already, uh, he didn't get his comeuppance, which is lame. Right. Which isn't a character flaw necessarily, a story flaw, but still. It bothers me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't like the, uh, you know, the end when Sora, sh- you're about to beat him, and Sora shoots the beam at him, and he yeah. blocks it away, and it closes up on his face, and he grins. There's this one fucking hair that's sticking to the left out of his little his little soul patch, and it drives <laughs> me nuts. And that's why it's he's like, lower. It's like comb your beard, you son of a bitch. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> Fuck you're in the fight of your life. You're you're in your own heart and your beard's not straight. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me, Master Zaynor? Fix your beard. Are you, come on, man. <sighs> but yeah, and, and then the voice actor change, you know, I it's just unfortunate. It's, yeah. And I the guy that did it is a really talented dude. It's just he's not Leonard Nimoy, and I don't think anybody could be Leonard Nimoy. No. So it's unfortunate that you can't do anything about it. And uh we miss you, Leonard. Yeah. Rest, in, Rest peace. in peace. Um, but yeah, just for the reasons you described. 
Yeah. Uh, my number seven. You're just not as mad about it as me. Yes. <laughs> my number seven is Syax. Okay. Uh, he's high because of his importance to the organization, how cool he is, like you described. I really like the relationship with him and Axel, even though sometimes it's a little, like, Syax kind of has the Marluxia problem where it's like, wait, why did you go back? And they try to explain it with, like, I wanted to find the girl, but then he's still just, well, like, doing evil things. You know what I mean? It's kind of... Yeah. It's not as bad as Marluxia, because Marluxia outright tried to betray the organization. Right, yeah. Where if Syax or Isa's real real goal was to find that girl they shoehorned into this game, Yeah. why did he join again? Because Master Xehanort don't know shit about it. Well, I think it was it had to do with something with, with Vexen and stuff like that, and that's why they let him in, back in. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. They don't really explain it though. That that's a small gripe. But um otherwise Syx is about as cool a design as a character gets. He's got the cool giant Especially as somebody. Yeah. Ooh. Well, somebody's a good looking boy, it's, but his nobody's <laughs> his nobody is what really gets me going with okay. that big X. The big X is and the good. hair flowing and yeah. And, yeah. and I'd like to stand and hold hands with him and look at the moon. Okay. Sometime, you know. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Ooh, okay. So anyway, you're number seven. A number seven is Shion. Fair. One Fair. of the few times I've cried playing a video game was when she died. Oh wow. Wow, wow, wow. You cried? Yeah, I shed a few tears. Oh wow. Um okay. like I I remember I watched all the cutscenes because uh, I, I had three five eight over two days, but I I just I couldn't beat it because like one of my one of the main buttons that you need was like my L button mm-hmm. was broken on my DS. Yeah, you've talked about this before. So I couldn't play the game. So I, I, I from where I was, I watched like a playthrough and everything. Like just like no commentary. No commentary playthrough. And uh Yeah, dude. When when she cr- when she died, I just it hit me so bad. I was mm-hmm. like, Oh my god. It, it was like three in the morning. I like binge watched the whole thing. Was like, oh my god, she oh no. But who I have ice cream with? And then no one remembers her. Yeah. I'm just like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. And then she she's back. To, and then she has to come back. Her theme is one of the best themes. We haven't talked about anyone's theme because no one has a theme on that level that we've talked about yet. Right? So I don't know if any of these guys have a theme. Uh I think Marluxia has a theme, probably. But No, I think it's just the uh organization. Master Xehanort. Yeah, Master Xehanort has a theme. But I think Marluxia is just the organization theme. Oh, it is? Hmm. Yeah, because that's when they introduce it in, in uh, Chain of Memories. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Shion, waifu for laifu. Wow. <laughs> no, that's aqua. <laughs> waifu for laifu, non-aqua division. <laughs> non-aqua division. Uh, okay. So that was your seven? Yeah, that's my number seven. My, um, my number seven. Are you ready for this? Uh, I thought it or was. Or is it your turn? I think it's my number six. Or wait, wait. I'm confused. We we got we got all switched around. Oh no, you're right. It's your number six, and then it's my six. I was thinking I Cyx was my seven. So yeah, 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 six. yeah. So six. Sorry. Now this is where it got real hard. Okay, mm-hmm. this top six, I was like. Yeah, I think we. My number one was real easy. I think we've revealed all the same characters now. I think with you saying Shion, I think we're even. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's not any. Yeah, yeah. So it's all the same characters right now. Yeah. My number six is Ansem. On the Ansem Report podcast? Yes. How dare you, his sir? Na- his name is Ansem. How dare you? Now. How dare you? There's a there's a one reason, one main reason as to why he's six. And it's how he died, dude. He switched it up. If he was just heart, he's supposed to be heartless Ansem. Seeker of darkness. And then he goes, You know, I kind of wanted to switch sides, but once everyone knows, blah, blah, blah. no, you're Ansem Seeker of darkness. You are the seeker he of. He didn't say he darkness. wanted to switch sides. That's not what he said. Okay. Essentially, he was like, I wanted to defy my fate, meaning he didn't want to do what he was supposed to be no, doing, no, no. right? No, no, no. You're reading it wrong. He knew he was going to lose. He wanted to defy his fate of losing, okay? But then when everybody turned on him, he found he just didn't care anymore. Okay. You're, okay. you're reading that wrong. So I did read it wrong. You're reading it wrong. Okay. So okay. he met, he wanted to defy his fate, like, fucking kill the sons of bitches. Right. But then when he found out people traded on him, he's like, ah, I don't care anymore. Mm. Just kill me. 
He didn't switch sides. Mm. He he accepted defeat. Mm. There's a difference. See, I don't. I didn't. It just it didn't sit well with me, man. I understand. Yeah, the way you read it. Right. But that's not what he meant. Mm. In my opinion, I, I, and maybe he did Who mean knows? that. Who but knows? The way it's written to me reads like, "Hey, I I wanted to kill you, but when I I just figured I, I didn't give a shit anymore." Mm. Okay. Which is more in line. Okay, I see that. But, okay. Hit me with your number six. Oh, yeah, that's all you have to say. Yeah, that's about all it? I have to. All I have to say. Okay, so this one's tough because I, I figure we'll talk more about Ansel when we get to you. To yeah. you. This one's tough because this is one of my favorite characters in Kingdom Hearts. I think I know. However, as an organization member, which is what we're ranking, he's number six, and that's Roxas. Roxas. Okay. okay. I love Roxas. I think Roxas is a good boy. He's best boy. Yeah. However. As an organization member, he kind of sucked. Okay, he didn't really do that. his missions well. He just did whatever. Hey, it's not his fault he got put on recon missions every time. Right. I know, I know. I'm just saying. Oh, he's got to do it all. <laughs> I'm saying, as an organization member, I ranked him as six. Because okay. the time we spent with him in the organization, while good with 358, that's not how I know Roxas. I know Roxas from grandstanding okay. and, and delivering trash and... Uh, you know, hanging out with Hainer, Pence, and Olette and struggling hmm. and coming in like a fucking badass to save everybody. Right, right. Kingdom Hearts 3. That's how I think of Roxas. Okay. I don't think of Roxas, the organization member. I think of, you can't leave the organ. You can't turn your back on the organization. Yeah. And he's like, watch me. You know, like, yeah. that's what I think. That's of. why I feel like he's bad. At- well, we'll talk about it. When right. I, uh, and he's, he's badass, but he wasn't in the organization then. Yeah. To me. He left them behind. Mm, he said, okay. fuck you guys. Okay, so, well then, but then there's the same thing with Marluxia then. No, it's different because he still had his organization, like he had okay. his little group, and yeah. he and the way he portrayed him wasn't as cool to me. It, yeah, it seemed more snake like. Okay, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Where Rox is just doing what he knows is right. Okay, so that's why I put him at six because to me he's like he's yes he's the thirteenth member, but he's like he never really cared about the organization he just woke up and was doing as his to- as he was told and then yeah. he started to form his own thoughts he said i'm not doing this anymore right okay okay that's why i have that's what six. you mean number 5 for me this is another tough one dude dude it, it's so this hard so top hard. 6 is the hardest thing this of all is so time hard right now um, you, honestly i could move these around like a million times over my number my number 5 i think um besides my number 1 my I number think my 1 top is my top 5 it's going to be it's going to be these five individuals just moved around. And yeah. You know what I mean? I think Roxas has got to stay at six. He's, you think he's so? the gatekeeper. That's how I feel. Mm, okay. My number five, Zigbar. Zigbar. Okay. Wow. Now, I okay. love Zigbar, obviously. Okay. Wow. I obviously love Zigbar. And this is more just the case. I think the other four people wow. deserve to be higher than Zigbar. You know what? What just resonated in my head? What? You really should have betrayed us. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's I how know. I feel. I know he's gonna I shoot feel betrayed. me in the back. Um, I feel betrayed. You clever little sneak. Yeah, I, I just, <laughs> it's not a, as much about what Zigbar is lacking, but it's more or less that I just think these other four deserve to be in front of him. Mm. Uh, I think while he does a- eventually, obviously, have a important role to play, you know. As of now, I think in the organization he doesn't. He always shows up and like has yeah. something to say, but you don't see him do a whole lot. Well, I I think a lot of his character is pushing people with like right. his words and, and right. stuff and, like and, that. And that's good. That's good. Yeah. But he, like as far as like he doesn't have like a moment as like a uh, in a fight or anything like that. Like his fight is fine to me. In Cage Two. In Cage Two, I think it's fine. I think it's. I think it's like the like hey like this is. Like, cause it's, it's the like start the kick of off it. of the boss rush, yeah. you know, and I think it's fine. And he has the clever little, I don't know, maybe and I'm it was wrong. the first time I ever had anti form happen when I was doing like a boss fight. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Like I, um, I was fighting him and I was going to be able to kill him. This was like my very first memory of playing cage Two, like my first playthrough and like I'm fighting him and then I was like, okay, I got him low enough. I, I do one more combo and I, I like. I went I went to go into Valor form to kill him and then I got anti form and then he clever little sneaked me and I'm just you can't reaction command or block the bullets mm-hmm. and so it's in the like first person view and <laughs> anti form Saurus just running back and forth across the screen that's I'm funny just like ah! 
<laughs> That's funny. If we're talking about organization members, plus how I just feel about the character, mm. like what they've done in an organization, plus how I feel about the character, mm. his letdown is the organization part of it. Okay. Where I literally love the character. Yeah. But he's just, he's just, he's five. Like that, I mm. can't, I can't explain it other than he's okay. five. Okay. And I love him. I love okay. the man, but I feel like he's more your character. Okay, I can see. I can not see that. mine, right? Yeah. But I love the man, right? And he's lose you. He's important. I get it, but that's right. not important to the organization necessarily. Right. Okay, okay, I see that. Uh, you are number five. My number five is Vanitas. Mm. Mm. Vanitas, he's so cool. He doubles down on everything. He he's just he's basically like kind of what I want to answer him to be like. You know, where he's just like, no, like, I want it to be darkness. Like, it, this is who I am. Like, and I will never stop trying to, like, like fuse with you and, like, like to, to right. like, kill you, essentially. Like, and I, will, I won't ever stop. Like, I'm going to be who I'm going to be. And his music is so good. Music is his good. fights are always tough. But they feel, they feel good once you're done with them. Um He's just super. He's he's super snarky. I I, I love Vanitas. He's, yeah. he's he's really good. I, I minus agree. the very 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 last fight with him in BBS where it's based on a like a reaction command that you sometimes don't get. Yeah, that is pretty bad. I played it again on critical and was so glad that I got it the first time because I was I was pl- trying to platinum the. Well, part of that remix. too was knowing to expect it. Like when we first played, yeah. you didn't know to expect it. I was it. like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah, and we didn't know what was going on. But yeah. No, I, I agree. I love Vanitas. Yeah. So good. I love Vanitas so much that he's higher than Zigbar on my list. So. Right. And okay. who's your number four? My number four is Zemnis. No! That's yeah. my number four, too. Really? Yep. Okay. Zemnis, he's good. Good tidings. I feel like maybe I would have put him at three had there not been, like, the weirdness in DDD with his character. Because, like, in, in, in KH2... And three, five, eight over two days. When you're seeing him in Zemnis, he has his goal, which is to get his his to be complete, right? And like the whole time, he's just stone cold. Like this is what we're going after. This is what we're gonna do. Like, like no matter the cost, I'm going to like finish Kingdom Hearts and become complete, right? And it's a it's one of those things where it's like you like villains where you can feel for them, right? Where you're like, damn, like he just. Or at least you understand their motivation. Yeah, yeah, that too, right? So like you can understand where they're coming from, and all the way up to until DDD, that was his only his only motivation. And then in DDD, it's like, oh, he's a part of Xehanort. It kind of makes him seem like it's like, was that really? Don't you think that maybe that was the narrative he sold to the organization to get them to follow him? Like that could that could be it. But, like, to me, that's not what it was. I think it was that, like, especially if you're going with the whole, like, like, if Terranoid, Terranort doesn't remember, then maybe there's there's something with Xemnas where he remembers some. And so he's like, mm-hmm. I, I know Kingdom Hearts is important. And then he gets it in his head that, oh, this is what's going to complete me again. Because if he knows that, like, that's how he's going to get completed, he just is going to kill himself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like like it, it's like a weird concept yeah and and that's why in my head and that's maybe, why i feel like lose you does it yeah in my head he knows that it's not the case hmm okay and he he, he knows, just sells it to them he's just selling it to that but that whole thing that's the thing too he's like in front of everyone right. at the very end and he's like complete me like type thing right. almost like the filling me with everlasting darkness right. like that type of thing right. happens well, that that's true, but that whole the whole that whole plot point of the organization doesn't make sense because yeah. Terranort said, "Hey, let's all unlock our hearts." And be- well, he just does it to some of them, right? Right. But Zemnis then is like, "I need to be completed again." Yeah, but that's not what Terranort wanted. Right, so it's yeah. kind of like what? Because they should have the same. That's why some people there's like a theory that like there's some more of Terra in Zemnis. 
like he wants to be completed again so that right he has yeah a yeah chance. i've heard that too because otherwise yeah. it doesn't make much sense right uh and that's why in my head i'm like he he knows that Gideon kingdom hearts is actually a part of like xehanort's plan right like, well, yeah i could see that and but then it doesn't work and so then they yeah. go back to the drawing board and then he's like well i guess i'm doing this with xehanort now you right. know what i mean yeah and that's what i think but i'm more subscribed to the terra yeah that would be cool that would yeah. be a really cool wrinkle to him also um, just his his boss fights are always so good yeah all of his fights are so good theme so good yep he's really cool uh Riku. cow, are cow you uniform <laughs> His cow uniform is zebra. dope. His zebra cow uniform. Yeah. Uh, are you sure you can trust Riku? Yeah. I love, like I love his voice stuff. lines. His voice actor is... Uh, what's his name? Peter St. Paul? Something St. Paul. Hmm. Sorry, I don't remember your name right now. If I follow you on Twitter, you're awesome. His voice actor is really cool. Yeah. He, he does a lot of... I'm handsome. Or I'm yeah. Zenmus. You know what yeah. I mean? Like... Oh, good it's tidings. A, it's, yeah, it's like an iconic oh, voice to me. You know, Like, if I hear that in anything else right. where it's similar, like if he does any voice acting right. for any other game, I'm going to be like, right. that's fucking Xemnas. <laughs> like, he has cool hair. He has cool little lightsaber traffic, air traffic beams control of beams of nothing. Of nothingness. Um, he does. Nothing. He has the cool building He's run up thing. Eternal. When I saw deep dive, I was like, "Oh, cool! Hopefully, we can do the building run up thing, and then we could do it against him in that fight." Yeah, and that was cool. Um, yeah, he's just he's just a cool character. I and about the whole KH three ending thing with him. Yeah, I like it. The problem is they didn't show us anything to make us believe that he would feel. There's that no way. like foreshadowing. There's no. Or well, anything. there's no like. Zigbar, let's go have a beer. You know what I mean? There's yeah. nothing where it's like he he wants to hang out with his bros or anything. You yeah. know what I mean? So there's nothing like that. And then suddenly he's like, everybody hates me. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, I just wanted to be their friends. You know, and but he never tries. He never, yeah. that we see. Because you, you think 358 would be a good place to do that because it's about the organization and the inner workings of it. Yeah. And that you rarely see him in the game in general. And when when you do, he's sitting in his chair and barking orders at people. Yeah. So for him to be like, oh, I, I'm lonely. It's like, yeah. it doesn't ring true. I wish it did. Because I actually think the lines he delivers there is good writing. Yeah. Like, outside of it, if you put it in a vacuum, you're like, oh, yeah. this is really good. This, this is, is a really good, good monologue he's doing. Where I think Ansem kind of suffers from not having a good monologue. Like, mm. if he could... We'll talk about that in a minute, but it, it, if his writing for that was better, I don't think you'd hate it as much. Mm, okay. you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where like the Zenmus one is like, he he says the thing about um. I think if he got more mad, I would like the Ansem yeah. delivery better. But he says the thing like uh, something about pain, and Sora says, "Well, being being whole is." There is pain or whatever, and he goes. Yeah. It must be so difficult as yeah. he fades away. You know what I mean like that line in yeah. general is good, and just uh, he's just he's just a good character. I really like Zemnis, and he was also my number four. Mm. My number three. I know what's gonna happen here. I already know what's happened here. Who number one is for both of us? But my number three is Vanitas. Your number three is Vanitas. My number three is Vanitas okay. because Vanitas, as you already said, he's dope. Okay. And this is more the opposite of of uh, Zigbar, where I just think the character is that cool that it doesn't matter that he didn't really do much for the organization. <laughs> like, I just think he's so cool. Uh, he rides a motorcycle around. He's a badass. Uh, he Haley Joel Osment loves fucking playing Vanitas. <laughs> and, like, he loves doing that evil voice. And you can tell, like, he's just so into it. And uh, I just think it's, like, cool. I always like... Well, always, but in most times in media, I like when there's like a dark version of a character. Yeah, and if it's done well, if it's done well, and he's basically dark Sora. Yeah, right. He's not dark Ventus even. He's dark Sora. Yeah, and but then he has that cool connection to Ventus, and he wants yeah. to continue combined with Ventus. Where that's why I believe, and this is a weird subtopic, but I think we're gonna find out that Ventus is not such a nice boy. Yeah, and he's dark Roxas. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> And then we're going to have a tag team match for the championship belts oh, of shit. Ventus and Vanitas versus Roxas and Sora. Oh, shit. Let's get it going, Nomura. Put it up. You can, you can have I that can one. I can see it. Can you can have it. that one, buddy. Take it. It's for free. For free. It's yours. I, I don't even want credit. I'm probably going to bitch that I didn't get credit when you do it, but <laughs> I don't want credit. 
he has the cool Riku suit, the first thing we saw in Riku when he was bad. Yeah. And then you find out it's from him, which is cool. He uh, is brutal. Yeah. He just tries to murder Aqua. Yeah. You know? Well, and that's what Zeno tries. Kill Aqua. Yeah. And merge with Ventus. Yeah. And then he goes, he literally tries to kill Aqua, you yeah. know? And multiple times he tries to kill Aqua. Yeah. And uh, I like their dynamic too, where yeah, yeah. he's just like always trying to kill her, and they they get in these like drag out fights where they're both just exhausted afterwards. Yeah, and, you know, I, I don't know. I just his keyblade's cool. Everything about him is just cool. Is. The first time you see him, he's just like leaning up on Ventus's dresser, like hey, bah, 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 bah. you know, like yeah. like some kind of jackass. I don't. Yeah. Know, I just love. I love Vanitas. I like that they made him a little taller. Yes. Like he was shorter in BBS. Yeah, they made him they made him fit taller. in more with the They did that to Riku too, Replica. The Replica's taller than he should be too. Oh yeah, that's yep. true. And I think it's so they fit in better with the cloaks. Shion they did not do that to. No, yeah. I think so that's on purpose. It's though. very obvious that when they're standing there in the 13 cloaks that one of them is Shion. Yeah. But the other two they're like, like oh. they're Demix height. They're fine. You yeah. know what I mean? They're not it's not super obvious. Yeah. Uh, when you put them next to the the Xehanort behemoths like Ansem and and uh, <laughs> Terranort and, yeah. and Zemnis, then yeah. yeah, but because those boys are those boys eat their big beefy corn. boys, they eat their corn. They're big boys. Yeah. Anyway, you're number two. Or I'm sorry, my number three. Yes, you're number three. I'm sorry. My number three. Rucksack. Roxas. I know what's happened here. Well, rucksack. Can we just? I don't. I don't know. I think I might surprise you. Uh, no, because I know who you have left. R- rucksack, yeah, but who's number one? Who's who knows? Oh, you rucksack. know what? Yeah, you might have picked Zigbar as number one. Rucksack. I feel that. Okay. Probably. Most OP, organization member. Two keyblades. You can't get much cooler than that. That's true. That is true. Two keyblades Even doesn't make sense how he has them in three, but deep dive. Movie. Yep. One of the most badass and FMBs is or whatever of all time. Mm-hmm. Or Blonde Sora, as they called them back then. <laughs> uh, like, just that whole scene is so good. When you fight as him and you have the double keyblades, so sick. 358 over two days. So good. He He's like, he's similar to Sora. And the fact that he just always does what he feels like is right, but I feel like he's more—he he definitely gets more angry. He do, he doesn't. And they, oh, they, yeah, Sora doesn't. Sora they, doesn't show a lot of emotion other than happy go lucky. They they, they and they reference that too. They're like, oh, you're angry. Like share that anger with Sora. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, he needs it. He's kind of soft. Right? right. And I I think he's just so badass. And he's like, you can't leave the organization. He's like, watch me. Right. Like, I'll kill anyone. Like type right. stuff. Right. Also, we didn't mention earlier Jesse McCartney. Yeah, great voice acting. Great voice for him actor. and Ventus. His theme, so good. Yes, top five easily. Top three. Top three. Yeah, maybe number one. Top three. Maybe. Uh, no, depends on three. the day. Top depends three. on the day. Top three, easily. Such a good character. I I I I wish that there was more of him in any any time he was on the screen in Cage Three. I was like, <gasps> give me more. Give me more Roxas. I was like, come on, Roxas. Give me more Roxas. Roxas, Ro- Roxas, Roxas. Yep. Good um, memes with the Roxas. Yeah. Uh, like, when you fight him, like, when in in uh, KH2 Final Mix, like, right before you get to the area where Deep Dive Video is and mm-hmm. you fight him, that fight is so badass. His, his battle fight is so hard but so cool. I like it. I like yeah. it all. There's not a single bit I don't like. Don't it, can I tell you the one thing I don't like about Roxas? Hmm. When you're fighting him as Sora in Kingdom Hearts 2 when they added that battle for Final Mix. Not the mm-hmm. not the data fight, but the fight that happens in um the world that never was, right? Yeah. They do this thing where Sora's holding up his keyblade and Roxas says, blah, 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 yeah. blah. Both hands just wailing on his keyblade. He's just so mad. Sora's knee drops and he loses his keyblade, right? Yeah. Sora goes to scrambles to go get it. Roxas is there holding one down. Stabs it down. Yeah, stabs it down. And then watches like a fucking idiot as Sora does this. Holds his hand out for (laughs) 15 (laughs) seconds. Sora gets his keyblade and slices him. And it's like he didn't expect it. Yeah. That's the one problem I have with Roxas. It's almost like when in Star Wars, 
when Emperor Palpatine holds his hands up like this. Yeah, and you're like, and they're like, what's he gonna do? <laughs> He's obviously gonna shoot force lightning at you. Like, yeah. do something, Mace Windu, you fucking idiot. Right. Like. Oh, he's obviously going to shoot force lightning. And that's sort of as he holds his hand out like this. And it's like, and maybe Roxas just doesn't believe he can summon his keyblade to his hand. But I feel like Roxas has done that before. So why wouldn't he know Sora can do that? You could, you could go along the lines of Unless like, he you're wants saying, him to win. Right. Well, that's what I'm going to say. Unless you're saying that fight is all metaphorical. Yeah. And Sora was going to win no matter what. Right. Then if that's the case, why'd we do it? I think it's just like fan service. Yeah. But that, that part bothers... They could have made Roxas more, like, aware of what was going on. He literally just stands there like, huh, I won. And then yeah. Sora's like... And you could literally, like, hold it there for 30 seconds and Roxas <laughs> wouldn't do anything. And then he slices him. That's that's I the one that. problem I have with Roxas. Okay. Anyway... My uh, one problem, I guess, oh. is his obsession with Hainer Pencil A when he never really had an actual... Yeah, like, that... That's the only thing for me. The heart never forgets, man. heart never forgets. Well, it's the same reason that... Riku's all in the nominee suddenly because his replica had a uh, connection yeah, with her. Yeah, it, it's they hearts are weird, man. In yeah. Kingdom Hearts, they they remember all kinds. That's of my shit. that's my one thing because I don't really, I don't really like Hainer Pencil. It like I don't dislike them, but I'm oh, not, I can get it. I'm not like. I'm not like, oh, I can't wait for this cutscene with Hainer Pencil yeah. Olet. I was like, no, give me more Roxas now. Right. Yeah. For sure. And, and they, then he just used it as bait to bring up Roxas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, who's your number two, dude? And my number two is Axel. I knew it. Got it memorized. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Goes without saying. Has like the most like iconic line. Got it memorized. Is that the most iconic line? I think. I think it's that. Kingdom Hearts is light. No. You're, you're mistaking iconic for he says it all the time. No, there's I, a difference. I no no. I, I I think I think it is. If you played Kingdom Hearts and you hadn't played Kingdom Hearts one, I understand the whole Kingdom Hearts is light, right? Other than that, it's like I also feel like it's well, the Jason, most. Hold on, it's the most referenceable too. Hold on, you're forgetting that if you cannot play any other Kingdom Hearts game if you don't play them in order. You have That's to play true. every game. So your 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 argument is That's valid. That's so true. You have to play as every game. As if KH one is that 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 important. It yes, is. it is the base, but no, you can't. Honestly, most of it wasn't even. If you've played Kingdom Hearts three and you didn't play BBS, I've actually you're a casual normie. I've actually never played KH one. You're a liar. I know you've. Played I've KH1. never played. KH1. I know you've. Played, you've I've never platinumed KH one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you still use the freaking you don't use the command menu, you fucking piece of garbage. <laughs> like what's wrong with you? you? You go into the spell menu and use spells that way. Yeah. God, how 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 oh, dare you? So terrible. So we're gonna talk about Axel more in a minute. My number two is Ansem, mm. Seeker of Darkness. Now again, as far as the organization goes, I don't know that he did that much for them. But the reason this podcast is what it is is because of Ansem, yeah. Seeker of Darkness. Yeah. Billy Zane's portrayal of him in Kingdom Hearts 1 is... So good. So good. And Richard Epcar's portrayal of him through He's the rest of the series so is good so too. good. They're both so They're good. They're both so good. And it's it's not like the Leonard Nimoy situation. It's right. like... I don't know if he's better, and I don't know how Billy Zane would have done with the rest of the dialogue. But if you listen to like Billy Zane's dialogue, because I have, in order for this podcast to work, I have like the, the isolated <laughs> stems of it. of it. Yeah, and just the way he, even the lines they didn't use, the way he delivers them, it's just like, oh my gosh, dude. Yeah, darkness. You know, right? And Richard Epcar almost does just as well. Yeah, and, and some of his most. I like them look. both, but it's like I can't really choose which. Right. Right. I can't. One of my favorite lines right now is just the laugh he does when you fight. The three. <laughs> yeah, like that it's laugh. It's the best laugh so ever. In, to, to reference what he's talking about in the three dads fight in Kingdom Hearts three, I call it the three dads fight because they're <laughs> everybody's favorite dads. Uh, they do this triple team attack. With, uh, for, for I've, I've heard it references the two of a two and a half men fight. Oh, I like that too. <laughs> the two, two and, and a half, half men. men. Zen, this is definitely Charlie Sheen, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. Actually, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, it's tough. I think Ansem might be Charlie. Which one's, which one's Ashton Kutcher? Uh, anyway, <laughs> they're 
Master Shane aren't shooting keys everywhere, and you're by yourself. Mickey and Riku get swept up in the keys. And they do this triple team attack when all three of them are alive. Yeah. And it ends with Ansem doing this kind of like burst. explosion burst around him. Yeah. And he goes, <laughs> like it's that every time he laugh. does it. And it's Can so you please funny. just put that? I will, that audio I will include in. it for reference, hopefully. Thank you. Um, but no, I love that laugh. I it's so good. And we were talking about the ending scenes. His isn't as good as Zenmus's. Because he kind of just like I think if he got like more mad about it, yeah, I would like he it just more. is kind of like because Riku's because it's not just him though. It's like Riku's like I think I'm gonna miss you, and it's like what? Yeah, what do you, what do you mean you're gonna miss like, him? Yeah, he was, he was, he, he, and that's more for like oh Riku's gotten over it type thing. He, he possessed your heart for years, man. Yeah, he, he was. A, I think that's like that's like fucked. It's like as if. Imagine you had like a crippling like pornography addiction and you're right. getting over it and then you're like, I think I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna miss you, Pornhub. Right. And he's like, Carpe diem. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> Pornhub's telling you to go go out and seize the day. Right. Cause then like Sora's like, Ansem. You know, like he's sad too. Yeah. And he's like, Don't worry about me, boy. Go out and forge your own destiny or yeah. something like that. And it's like Okay, Ansem. I don't. I don't know. But if we're just talking about Ansem in general, his design is super cool. Yep, so good. Um, his design informed Master Xehanort's design heavily. Yeah, you know, right? Uh, he he's tan as fuck. Yeah, Be- he's a beautiful man. A beautiful, with beautiful man. white hair. Yeah, he's got that cool heartless emblem. I mean, he, is that a he, chest tattoo or he, does that hold his coat together? I don't know. I don't know. Probably both. And his his fashion choices are daring. Right. He looks he's got these I big mean, boots and, and this trench coat and I mean I would say not only Master Xehanort, but Zemnis also. Well yeah. Zemnis the, looks like the way the Zemnis. Face, the face, yeah, but right. I Zemnis just wears a black cloak. I mean his there. hair. That that's the one thing. Everybody was all we were all bitching about Axel not having clothes. Where's Zemnis's clothes, dude? That's true. Zemnis well, Zemnis, and then, Zemnis and then, deserves some clothes. And then they just throw a black coat on, on Ansem. Right. Yeah, that's kind of why. Why did they throw a black coat on my boy? He had to. He had like, to... okay, okay, he has a black coat on him when you fight him in the three, right? right. And then you damage him or whatever, and then he he does his like, <laughs> yeah, and then it bursts yeah. and he's and he's in the they in the cloak. Done that. Yeah, everybody deserves their own clothes. No mirror. Stop putting everybody in cloaks all the time. Master yeah. masters better have a fucking three piece suit on. <laughs> uh, With once, removable layers. Once they reveal that it's Demix, he better have a three piece suit on. <laughs> Shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm not wrong. The Master of Masters isn't the only character that's silly enough to do something like that. That's true. Demix is definitely silly enough to do something like that. Also Zigbart. Also Zigbart, but he's already lose you. So anyway, uh Zen the, or Ansem, dude, love the man. Yeah. That's why he's the name namesake of this podcast. We love him. Yeah. But he's not number one for me. Let's talk about your number one first. My number one. Yeah. Zigbar. Zigbar. Of course. He's the boy. Of course. He's the boy. You like, love Zigbar. I, I like ever since playing KH two. Ever since. Just Zigbar. I, I was always like, oh my god, he's As really if. cool. He's in so many of the games. He's always in important moments. Papa Zigbar. Mm-hmm. He's you know <laughs> the whole I'm Xehanort yep. meme. Yep. And then, it, but like, also just like, almost being like a fog, father figure for Roxas, yeah, slightly. He, he did. And then also finding out he's lose you with a part of Xehanort in him. So it's just like, he's such a good character. I yeah. love him. I, I didn't know I could do his voice until we did what was it three five eight over two days playthrough. I don't remember. It was probably I think two. So. It was probably two. Really. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, I think you tried to do his voice in, when we played two. Mm, maybe. Yeah, it definitely was because we didn't do three five over two till way after we played the other games because we weren't gonna play it. Remember? And then I went to the Kingdom Hearts Orchestra and they played Chion's theme and I was like, okay, we have to do. this. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, it must have been. Yeah, it was two for sure. Um, but yeah, he's just he's just my favorite overall. I can't wait to see him more. Um, yeah, you, you're I, gonna get more of them. I really hope that there's a lot more of them in the like DLC and stuff that they yeah. release. I I think you're gonna be. I think that's gonna happen. So nice. So my number one is Axel. 
And that that's the one that I was I, and, I have Axel two, Zigbar one. Right. They could they could switch, you know. And Axel Axel to me has transcended the organization. Yeah. In multiple ways. Uh but even the reason he's been you know, a big part of the story is because he was so popular from the get go. Right. He was like the breakout star of, in Chain of Memories and in two, uh where people just really identified with him, me included. Uh and and he's the he's the venom he's the he's the anti hero you know yeah. what I mean that I think we wanted Riku to be but Riku wasn't an anti hero he was a guy a good guy who was bad for a little bit now he's a good guy again like yeah. he doesn't he's still on the right side where Axel Axel's a good guy now but he was an anti hero he was doing things for his own means he's yeah. an assassin right they don't they don't call anybody else in the organization an assassin yeah they that's they. They're very clear. Axel's job is to kill people. Yeah. Uh, and he does. And he, you know, he, he murders, exterminates. He murders a bunch of organization yeah. members. And then, um, but then he's driven by his one purpose of getting his friend back yeah. and Roxas. And I think part of him is driven by getting Shion back too, but he doesn't really realize that because he doesn't know who Shion is. Yeah. Know? Yeah. But I think that's part of a driving force. And uh, he's just a cool dude, man. And, They've kind of almost made him Deadpool esque, yeah. In the way that he like references, and I I think Quentin Flynn, who's an excellent voice actor, mm-hmm. has a lot to do with that. Yeah, uh, Quentin Flynn loves being Axel. You can tell on yeah. Twitter when you follow him. He loves being getting the you know people talking right. about him. And but I think you know he's the, the voice actor for Spider Man and Ultimate Alliance. Yeah, we figured that out recently. <laughs> uh, but he's voice actor for a ton of stuff. But right. he's you know. He loves being Axel, and there's a good reason why, because Axel's a cool character. Uh, all the fourth wall breaking stuff he did in this in Kingdom March three is pretty entertaining. Yeah, the the whole everybody everybody's rooting for me, and you know how popular I am. Yeah, you can't ax the Axel. Isa. Yeah, I love the Isa scream. That's my favorite. I think even in the scene when they're all in Yen Sid's office, I guess for lack of a better term. Yeah, and. He's just like, I'm so confused. <laughs> right. And then Jiminy does the you can look in your gummy phone. I've given every and explains everything up to this point. You know, twenty hours into the game, they're telling us that. Yeah. But he's the one going, Oh, this is so confusing. And it's yeah. like, Yeah, we're with you, Roxas. Right. Or Ro- Axel. Why do you say Roxas? Axel. I'm glad that I'm glad that they basically were like, This is Axel. He identifies as Axel. He's not Lee, even though he's a somebody. Right. Because the the transition to Lee, that that's hashtag not my axle, you know. <laughs> like here's the thing, I think I I don't know what the I, I'd like to know more about that. Why he did that, you know? Well, I think at one point they had him say like I'm not Axel, I'm Lee. I think he says that in DDD when he saves Sora, right? And then, but you could say that he just said that to like kind of in spite of the organization to show Sora that he was on their side. Yeah, yeah. And then when he's with when he's with Kyrie, she calls him Lee. And then And he's like, Will you call me Axel? He's like, Yeah. Got my it name's memorized. Axel. Got it memorized. So yeah, I I'd like to know why that was done. Cause now he's just gonna be Axel, right? Right. They're not gonna go back to Lee. No, I don't think so. I think Isa I think, Isa yeah. will call him Lee. He's uh yeah. But that's like, you know, Addison calls me Spike, even though that hasn't been my nickname for right. 15 years. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But I want to know why they made that decision. Because they, like you said in DDD, they were like, I'm Lee. And now he's like, I'm Axel. And it's like, yeah, th- that's the thing I'm saying. Like, I, I feel like he, he could have just said that to be like, like, I'm not on your side organization. I'm right. not a nobody. I'm a somebody. Right. You know? Yeah. And then him getting his keyblade broken and then it's suddenly back again was weird. That was a little weird. A little weird. But other than that, I I really like Axel. How he holds his keyblade is dope. Yeah, he kind of just sh- slumps it over his shoulder. Yeah. Well, I wish I, there was more with that. I was like, why uh who who taught these guys? And then I remember it was Merlin and it's like, why is a guy who doesn't know how to use a keyblade teaching people how to use a keyblade? Cuz yeah, no wonder Axel's going to be sloppy with it and Kyrie's going to have no clue what to do. <laughs> Do we have anything else to say about Axel? <sighs> I, he's just he's in my opinion he's the best organization. One ever. of the best lines of his is the whole you can keep running but I'll always be there to bring you back. Yeah, like he's just 
So good. It's a good one. Good voice acting from Quentin Flynn. Shout out to Quentin Flynn. All right. Great voice actor. Great voice actor. His clothes are all right at the when he when he finally gets his clothes. Yeah, not as grand as I would want it to be considering he we waited so long to get him. Yeah. But I think they just kept it that way to keep some mystique about him. Like maybe he is on the bad side. Maybe but, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. So. And I, I mean, I when I whenever anyone says Axel, I'll always think of him in the black yeah. coat. You know. Yeah, that's true. The way he sacrifices himself to save Sora. That too. In two is good. And then the really suspicious line he says, "Tell Kyrie I'm sorry for what I did to her." Right. <laughs> You're like what? What did you do to Kyrie, Axel? Besides kidnapper, I guess kidnapping is pretty uh yeah pretty horrible. But it but... seems like he like did so. <laughs> yeah, it seems like there's a little more to it. Yeah. Like he did something he shouldn't have done. I don't know. <laughs> um. Anyway, that's our list, man. Wow, I feel accomplished. Yeah. How do you feel about our list? I feel very good about our list. Yeah, I'm glad Luxord's at the bottom and Axel's at the top. Because that's how it belongs. Anyway, Replicu. <laughs> we want to know. We want to know what you guys, how you guys would rank the organization. Let us know down in the comments below, or shoot us an email. If you shoot us an email, I will read your list on air next week for the podcast. So yeah. hit us up. Let us know what's going on. Uh, thank you for listening and watching. Yeah. Next week, I have no. Oh, next week we're finishing up the Sleeping Realms. Yeah. Finally, I know it's been part three. Part three. It's been a four week process. Uh, we didn't want to. We didn't want to have episode thirteen not be this though. Right. So next week we will finish up the Sleeping Realms. Thank you guys for watching. Instead of may your heart be your guiding key, I think Jason's gonna hit us with a Zigbar line to end the episode here. <laughs> I thought I thought you were gonna ask me to do the may your heart be your guiding key as as. Oh, you could do it like that because he does say it. That's right. Yeah, he's like may your heart be your guiding key. No, it's just he all he says is may oh yeah your may heart. your heart and then it yeah, yeah, yeah. stops. All right. Well, bye, everybody. <laughs>